Hi, this is Will Faber from r ride again, and today we're going to talk about the three uses of the legs. Now, there's one very important thing that's missing from most people's riding, and that is the third thing that the leg must ask the horse to do. Now, everyone knows that the legs mean to ask the horse to move forward. That is, when we impulse with both calves of both legs, the horse should move straight ahead and move away from your legs. And most people understand that the leg can also mean to move laterally. That is, the horse can move away from the leg towards the side, and we can displace the haunches from one side to the other. But there's a third thing, and this is the thing that's so important to collection and correct riding. The leg can also mean for the horse to lift its back. Now, how do we do that? Now, what we have to do for that, I'm going to loosen her leg here and just let it hang down a little bit. Just let your leg hang down for me, Jenny. Good. And just let it, no, completely relax. Don't have any tension in it. That's it. Keep the horse nice and relaxed there. Now, most of you have probably seen at some point um, a chiropractor perhaps work on your horse. And they will actually get underneath the horse like this and you'll see them put their fingers up here and the horse will round its back away. Well, that's essentially the same thing we, that the horse has to learn to do from your leg. Nuno Oliveira used to call it, he used to say it's like plucking a guitar string, that you want to pluck the side of the horse right underneath the break of the leg here, I mean, right underneath the, um, the break of the side of the, the barrel there, excuse me, and you want to touch under here so you would come under, if you had a spur on, you literally come in like that and just give it a little click and then put your foot right back down again. So now, once again, always remember that no aid should ever be pressed and held against the horse. If your legs are asking the horse to move forward, they simply impulse in both and completely relax. Let all the tension out of your leg there, Jenny. Let this knee relax for me. Yes, there we go. So you want to have all the tension out of your legs. Nuno used to also say that the, the leg should lie like a wet noodle around the side of the horse, just so it can breathe with the body of the horse. Then it can feel. The horse can feel the lightest touch of a, a fly landing on it. It can certainly feel and learn to go from a very light touch of your leg. So once again, the three things the horse has to learn the leg mean. Both legs intensely in with the calf, boom like that, and impulse kind of like a karate chop, boom and out again, it's relaxed. That means to move straight forward. Anytime the leg comes in and touches one leg at a time, we're gonna ask the horse to move laterally, okay? The third thing, once again, that the leg can ask the horse is to bring its back up, and by that we bring the heel in and we get underneath the horse, and she would either bring, just loosen your leg here for me, Jenny, she either bring her heel up and just get the horse with her heel a little bit like that, and immediately putting the heel back down, lifting the toe up to keep the leg in place, as opposed to jamming the heel down. When you jam the heel down, it makes your foot go like that and out in front of the horse. So if you hold your toe up, that lets your leg just hang there. So you let it relax from the ankle, but hold the toe up with the stirrup still on. I'm gonna put it back on there. And once again, if she had a spur on, the spur would be here on her heel at such a level. And where the level of your spur depends on the length of your leg. If you're a short person on a big horse, you need to put the spurs down lower because you don't want the spur up here on the side of the horse. You want the spur to hit below the break of the barrel here. That is where it starts to curve in, back inwards again. So you would come under there like that, a little twist, and boom, a little pluck, like a plucking guitar string. So if I, that were the spur, if my thumb were the spur, for instance, it would come in like that. She'd pluck upwards with her heel and just put the heel right back down again. And that would ask the horse to bring the back up. Now, the horse may not do that instantly that you do that, but most of them respond to that and they begin to learn that that's a different feeling than it is when they just impulse here. So it means a different thing. So once again, learn this third thing. It's like the little magic button that we learn that brings the horses back up, asking it to engage upwards. Then as we ride it forward, then we can get that lovely round swinging trot. Will Faber from Art to Ride, thank you so much today. I hope that helps. And uh, feel free to send in your, uh, your questions. This is Jenny McDonald, who is kind enough to be our model for today. Say hi, Jenny. <laughs> and uh, we'll see you next time. Thank you.